Achieving symmetry, making one eye bigger is our topic today. A um, little bit of our coffee break. Let's see what we can accomplish in 10 minutes or less, starting now. Hello, everyone. All right, so um, this topic today was inspired by not one, but four friends. Four friends called me independently each time, and they asked me, how do you make one eye bigger than the other? Because inside Luminar Neo, you'll see that we could use the slider tool, and it's going to be able to make both eyes bigger. I'm going to show you how to, to make that a uh, simple eye. Now, it's a real five-second tutorial. So to stretch it out, I'm going to show you what to do if it doesn't recognize both eyes. All right. So here we are. And I'm going to use me as the example. So my good friend, Richie, Ace Richie Acevedo and um, his beautiful wife, uh, Surly, took this photo of me. I didn't notice my one eye was smaller. I think I was exhausted. So let's fix it real quick. Now, I did do a little editing to this already just to make it cleaner because I want to focus on the eyes. So I'm going to come down to the portrait tools. And here we are, face AI and enlarge eyes right here. Watch this. I'm going to go to an extreme. Now that looks freaky. Oh my God. So I want this eye bigger. So I'm going to click mask. And under the mask, I'll click select brush. And I'm going to paint the effect in at 100% strength and leave the softness at 100. Now I'm going to only paint just the eye. There we go. Look at this. Now that I painted just the eye, it looks a little too big, which is fine. So I'm going to go back over here. And here's the enhanced eye again. Or enlarge eye, rather. Now look at this. Because I masked it, it's on its own layer. Right now, it's on its own. It's, it, it's, it's, I don't want to call it a layer. It's in its own area. All right. You're only going to be able to see just that. So let's move it right about, yeah, right about here is fine. All right. That looks good. Now, here's the catch. If I want to add <laughs> catch lights to the, to this image, because I masked it, it'll only add catch lights to the one eye. So I'll show you what I mean by that. So, if I were to add an iris flare, look at that. It's only adding it to the one eye because it was masked. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to close the tool. Now I'm going to reopen the tool again. And notice everything is set back to default. That's because the tool itself, I'm re I'm doing another instance of that tool. So if I click on edits or history, You'll see that's where the face AI is. Well, I want to add another one, all right? So I'm going to add another one this time. Now it's going to recognize both eyes. So there we are. Look at that. While I'm here, I'm going to enhance the eyes a little bit better. And I noticed, Carl, when they did this, they used a wide-angle lens. And the lens distortion made me look heavy. So... I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to slim the face, not to the point to where my mother couldn't recognize me, but just a little, right about here. And the weirdest thing, Carl, I walked by their, their mirror. Their mirror had the same lens distortion. No, so they did shoot this, if I'm not mistaken, with an 85, no, a 200 millimeter lens. Yep, they did. They photographed it with a 200 millimeter lens, and it was a 120 is the focal length. Personally, had they have shot it with a 200, it would have slimmed the face a little bit more. But look at this, we'll do before and after. Here's the original, and look at the change. Just that slight little difference. Notice I'm not using doing a lot here. I'm just doing just a little bit to make it still look realistic. And that look that still looks like me. Don't go to an extreme unless the person asks you to. Now, that looks great there, right? It worked great. However, a good friend of mine sent me another picture 
and we'll do single image. There we are. This is of his beautiful bride. I'm going to adjust it, revert to original. There we go. All right. So this is from Fred Eckhart. He was actually a uh, an ambassador to Fuji, Fiji, a U.S. ambassador to Fiji. He's a phenomenal friend of mine. He took these photos many, many, many years ago. He wants to enhance one eye. Now, the image needs some work. So before I go any further, I am going to come in to do noise or sharp, super sharpen, hit the middle. That looks good. Maybe a little bit of noiseless. Mm, too much. I'll go low. Nope, I don't like it. So I'm going to, um, I just reversed it. Let's make sure. Yep. So all I do is I just do super sharpen. I'll attack the rest of it later. But the eye is what we're looking at. Now, if I come down here to face AI, like we did earlier, it does recognize the face. Look at that. However, look at this, it's not recognizing the eye. So in a case like this, what do we do? Well, we go old school. We take a layer, I'm gonna duplicate it. Now that I duplicated the layer, I'm gonna bring the opacity down just so you can see it. What I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna manually enlarge the eye right about there. Then I'm gonna come in and try to match it. You may have to adjust the opacity again. There we go. So I'm gonna come over here. And what I really want is that right eye or her left eye and the nose to be right on. Now I'll make it larger. There we go. And now I'm gonna mask it, brush, paint, and I'm going to paint only in, like I did earlier, this eye here. Wow, I was way off. All right, which is fine. I got what I wanted. So now I'm going to move it in place. There we go. And if it's too large, I can change it up a bit. Or if I needed to, just slightly rotate it. I'm going to shrink it just a little bit. There we go. And then move it right into place. There we have it, right about there. All right. And again, this is going to be something you'll work with. Oh, let me move it out here. Practice it and get it down. So if I were to hide it, this layer here, it's here and you made it slightly larger. And then of course there's further enhancements you could do with this. If that doesn't work, in the case like this, what I asked him to do was send me a few other images of her eyes. And then what I would do is just copy those eyes and paste them into the place here. That's if this was a one of a kind image and he desperately wanted it, that's something I would do. In a case like for this particular image, it's nostalgic for him. But honestly, with the lighting conditions, that, that's the best you're probably going to get with that. Yes, you can go in with the clone and stamp tool and get rid of um, the under the eyes, the way the light made them look puffier and um, dark circles. That can easily be fixed. So that is a restoration. That's something that Photoshop lives for. That's what Photoshop was designed for, to repair images. Luminar Neo is designed to enhance them. But we do have some of the tools, like in that case there, I could make one eye bigger just by creating a new layer, moving it into place, and then applying it. But the easiest way, of course, is when we did the image of myself, where we just went right into that portrait tool. Let me get right back to it. Here we go. Right when we want, right into the portrait tool, look how natural that looks. All right? Well, there you have it. Now, for those that are watching this, if you want to stick around, if you want to watch this live, here is the, the link. Just scan the QR code or go to skyland.events forward slash Luminar Coffee Break. 
Um, and then that'll get you on to the live show. And the purpose for the live show is like the people that are here today, they'll stick around for the Ask Me Anything segment where they can ask any questions about this technique or tutorials in the past, what's new in the photo industry or live tech support if they need help with their Luminar Neo. All right. So for those that are here, stick around. For everyone else, I'll see you at the next coffee break.